Tony, this is long story short, and let's be real for a second. In our modern society, we all rely a lot on larger social systems. They supply us with fresh water, take away our waste, protect us from nature, others, sometimes even ourselves. These systems exist because a while ago, people realized they could get more done if they worked together. They're far more widespread and play a much more active role in society today than ever before. We trust these systems because, very generally speaking, they seem to work miracles as they make our society a healthier place. Which is why it's such a shame when the system of governments, businesses, and other institutions bring about the kind of suffering they were intended to alleviate. Whether due to ignorance or willful negligence, some of America's most notorious public health crises have been self-inflicted. The word only got out around 50 years ago that tobacco was deadly. Before that, it was commonly endorsed by doctors as a safe, healthy, and even beneficial recreational activity in massive ad campaigns. For a large portion of the 1900s, ending in the 70s and 80s, Leaded gasoline was extremely common in the U.S., even as evidence showed that the lead was getting into the environment and accumulating in dangerous levels in the public, almost certainly causing subtle but widespread brain damage before it was phased out. In 1937, sulfanilamide, an early antibiotic, was formulated with other chemicals to produce a tasty elixir. Regulations weren't great at the time, though, and the individuals behind it didn't bother to test it properly. The product contained what is today used as antifreeze. Over 100 people, many of them children, died as a direct result of something intended to be medicine. As crises like these are unfolding, the first step to fixing them is to take note of something abnormal in society and then to acknowledge that a problem exists. Because it's only then that you can dissect the problem and move to seek solutions. So let's identify something strange in the United States. Something that doesn't seem right. The US has around 1 20th of the world's population, yet over a fifth of the world's prison population. For every 100,000 residents, around 700 are incarcerated. This is the highest rate in the world, and about four times the similar figures for Europe in 2013. 2.2 million people are in jails or prison in the U.S. 4.6 million are under surveillance due to probation. 70 million have an arrest record. Abnormal statistics like these, in comparison to the rest of the world, are a red flag that something is wrong. Not unlike noticing startling rates of cancer among those who smoke compared to those who do not. And when we identify that something is wrong outside the normal variations we expect, that's when we should begin asking about the system in question. Is it helping society get better, or is it making things worse? People are incarcerated for crime. At least, that's the simple version. Lots can be said about the nature of those crimes and the laws around them, but at the end of the day, incarceration is a response to what society deems criminal behavior. Society does something to people to reduce the chances they will offend again. So what happens to people incarcerated in the US? Lots of things, but to make a long story short, they don't do so well. For the US, the combined state and federal correctional systems double as the nation's largest mental health institution. Almost half of the inmate population in the US has been diagnosed with a mental illness, and over half of those are considered especially serious. These diagnoses are first made almost universally during incarceration, and on average, diagnoses of clinical depression, anxiety, PTSD, and personality disorders occur around two years in. These findings suggest that people with mental issues are not receiving help until they are already in prison. Or worse, that prison brings out these disorders in people. In a society in which jokes about molestation in prison are commonplace, the latter assessment doesn't seem all that unlikely. As far as physical health goes, the effects of incarceration on the individual are, again, not good. In the conditions present in US prisons, cases of cardiovascular disease seem to be especially high. 
Even when corrected for race and socioeconomic factors, recent releases from prison have a higher risk of death or hospitalization due to cardiovascular disease. This is attributed by the Journal of the American College of Cardiology to low-quality health care combined with a sedentary lifestyle enforced by constant confinement and limited autonomy for healthy behavior such as access to nutrition. Now, at this point, some of you may be thinking, not without warrant, why should we care? After all, many of these people are criminals. Isn't this supposed to be punishment? But that's just it. Punishment is only one aspect of a broader system, the goal of which is to make society healthier and to prevent people from committing crime in the future. If that isn't the point, then what is? Are we spending money purely to punish people? Again, if punishment doesn't improve the actual problem, then what are we doing? More importantly though, what if it makes it worse? Across the board, it has become abundantly clear that suffering breeds crime, and crime breeds suffering. When people are physically or mentally in a state of despair, regardless of how they got there, that's when bad decisions and quick gratification become easy. So, considering how our system leaves people in just that state startlingly often, is it any wonder that we're not getting the results we're after? The United States has some of the highest rates of recidivism in the world, though we're definitely not the only ones doing something wrong. The numbers vary depending on what year ranges are analyzed, but in a general sense, flip a coin. If you've been incarcerated and released, you're as likely to find yourself back in the clink someday as that coin is to land on heads. And once you're a repeat offender, it is likely that your time spent in prison will be even longer, only exacerbating the problems you may have experienced in the first place. Now, I'm not going to tell you what I think the solution is, at least not in this video. If you all are interested in my opinions, let me know, and I'll make a follow-up. But the truth is, like with every other public health crisis, the first step really is just acknowledging that something is wrong. It's looking at our country, seeing that we lead the world in locking people in cages, and coming to a consensus that this isn't sustainable. Even if the moral reasons don't convince you something is wrong, economically this just doesn't make sense. Spending on corrections has risen drastically in the past 20 years. Having over a fifth of the world's prison population is not cheap, it is not moral, and again, it is not sustainable. And while the solution to the problem may be the subject of debate, the failure of the current system should not be. We are spending more money to put people through a system that is demonstrably harmful and counterproductive to its own goals, to reduce criminal behavior, and ultimately to make our world a better place. Long story short, the current implementation of the system is hurting our people, it's hurting our nation, and it's hurting our wallets. At what point will we start making changes? Oh yeah, it feels good to have that video done. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Um, sorry that this one's a little bit late for those of you who've been waiting. Uh, this one went through a lot of reshoots and re-edits while we tried to get the, the feel right for what we were going for. This is about as political as it's ever gonna get on this, uh, on this channel. It's kind of the same mindset that we went into. This is one of those things like, I can't even believe this is political. But um, it's the same mindset that we went into with the War on Drugs one. There is still a lot of debate over what the solution is for this issue and others like it. But like the war on drugs, there is a ton of evidence that the system that exists right now uh, is just really toxic for our society. And this video talks about some of the reasons why. As with anything on this channel, we do our best with research, but we are not experts. So if this piques your interest, I highly recommend that you continue to do more research of your own, especially into the history of our system and maybe some of the solutions that people have proposed. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. In either case, let me know what your thoughts are, if you have any in the comments below. And please come back in a few weeks when we release our next one. I'm Tony Pearson. This is Long Story Short. Have a good one.